What is up, everyone? Welcome to the Flea Flicker NFL Show. I am your host, Arib Umar. And today, I just want to focus on a mock draft. And I did a previous mock draft with my co-host, Amal Ronak. Today, I want to do a mock draft with trades in it. And I have three main trades, and I'll get to those whenever those draft picks, uh, like, whenever I get to those draft picks. But for now, I just want to drive, dive right into this mock draft. So let's just jump right into it. So starting with the first overall pick, which is currently held by the Cincinnati Bengals, I believe that they're going to take the easy pick here. They're going to go with the former Heisman winner, the player everyone knows they're going to pick. There's no surprise here. They are going to pick Joe Burrow, the quarterback from LSU. He pretty much had the best quarterback season like ever in college history. He had something like 60 picks and only 8 interceptions. Led his team to the national championship, won the championship title, won the Heisman. Uh, th- this, this isn't a pick I can really debate. Now jumping into the second pick for the Washington Redskins, I think they're a possible trade-down candidate. There are rumors that they're doing a lot of work into the quarterback from uh, from Utah State, is it? Uh, the quarterback, Jordan Love. I kind of am sort of meh with Jordan Love, but we can talk about that later because I have him going later in this mock draft. But the pick that everyone has them going, and for me, he's the best player in the draft, Ohio State's DN Chase Young. He's probably the best prospect since Miles Garrett back in 2017, I think it was. I don't really think you can go wrong with this. He's probably he's most likely going to be a stud DN. I don't think he's going to have he's going to bust at all. He has that athleticism. He has that speed. He has everything you want in an edge rusher. He can probably work on you know switching up his power moves and using certain other moves instead of consistently using one move over and over again. And then eventually uh, switching over, he could definitely improve on that. But when he does improve on that, he's going to be a beast in the NFL. And the, 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 the Redskins are really going to beef up that defensive line after drafting Montez Sweat, Daron Payne, all these guys. They have Ryan Kerrigan still on that team, Matt, Matt Ioannidis. They have lots of good defensive linemen on that team uh, with Jonathan Allen as well, the other um, former Alabama defensive linemen. That's... They're going to really follow the San Francisco 49ers model of things when it comes to building a defensive line and having that carry you to a Super Bowl. So they're following a good blueprint, and I hope it works for them. Now, for the third overall pick, I have a trade happening between the Detroit Lions and the Miami Dolphins. The Detroit Lions will trade away their fifth... Uh, uh, they're going to trade away their third overall selection for the fifth overall pick. 39th overall pick, which is in the second round, the 70th or 70th overall pick, uh, overall pick, which is in the third, and the 141, which I believe is in the fourth, and they're going to trade that away to the uh, Miami Dolphins, who are going up two spots and drafting hopefully their franchise quarterback in quarterback Tua Tagovailoa from Alabama. I really like Tua. I think he, people are saying he might be a product of the Alabama system. I don't think that's the case at all. He's a baller. He really knows how to read defenses. I think he probably has maybe the best mind in the in this class. Uh, he does have injury concerns, and I think the fact that you can't do a physical right now with the quarantine happening, that's going to be a huge impact on him. But I think the, the, the Dolphins are going to jump up and grab their franchise QB here. They're not going to wait around, and maybe someone else like the Raiders or someone – like the someone like the Saints or the Chargers or maybe even the Panthers trade up and take Tua. They're going to jump up and make sure they get their guy. I don't think Tua is going to be a bust. Tua is a baller. I think this is a great pick for the Dolphins and a great trade for the Lions as well, trading back. And they're probably going to still get the guy they wanted all along anyway. So but a good trade on both sides. Now with the fourth overall selection, which is held by the New York Giants, I think they're going to go after an offensive tackle here to shore up. Uh, that offensive line, you had Daniel Jones having a lot of fumbles, and you can potentially almost help solve that issue by drafting a stud offensive lineman here. I think Jedrick Wills is probably the best offensive lineman in this draft class. I think he's the safest. He needs the least amount of development, and he's already a really good player in both run blocking and pass blocking. You can't really miss out on offensive tackle here. Your offensive line is has been struggling recently. You gave Nate Solder a huge uh, contract in 2018, I believe, when he's coming from the Patriots. He hasn't really panned out. You need someone to protect that blind side for your franchise QB for the next few years. 
multiple other teams like the Eagles and like the the Chiefs, they've done things like that where they have a good offense tackle to guard their uh, franchise quarterbacks. And I think that's the move for the New York Giants. I had them going Jedrick Will's offensive tackle from Alabama. With the fifth overall pick, which was traded uh, where the Detroit Lions traded back and got a pretty big haul from it, I had them selecting the guy they're probably already going to choose in Jeffrey Akuda, the quarterback, uh, the cornerback from Ohio State University. They gave up Darius Slay in the trade uh, to the Philadelphia Eagles. They lost or they traded away Quadre Diggs, who was more of a safety, but still you're need in desperate need of DB help. And when you look at what Matt Patricia has do, uh, done in the last couple offseason, he brought in Trey Flowers last offseason for the Patriots, brought in Deron Harmon, he brought in Danny Schultz, and all these guys uh, are from the New England Patriots. And if you look what Bill Belichick has done, the only position he's really paid has been cornerback in Stephon Gilmore. Jeff Okuda has that type of ceiling. He has the potential to be one of those game breakers, the ones where you could, you're not going to even throw to one entire side of the field. You're potentially locking down an entire option for that offense. He has that potential, and if uh, if Matt Patricia is doing what Bill Belichick is doing and trying to clone him, he's going to go after a cornerback. Jeff Okuda is the best one in this class. No-brainer pick here. Now with the sixth overall pick, uh, the L.A. Chargers, I had them selecting Justin Herbert, the quarterback from Oregon. I think Justin Herbert is really raw. His footwork and everything is not the greatest, but he has a high ceiling. And I think he's probably a safer prospect than Jordan Love. I think his ceiling is definitely a Carson Wentz or Andrew Luck type of player. His floor, however, is kind of low. I saw multiple times where he was just making boneheaded decisions and throwing the ball to completely wrong places in the field. And that being said, though, I think He's the best remaining quarterback and probably the safest remaining quarterback after the big two and Burrow and Tua have gone. L.A. has Tyra Taylor starting games for them right now. You don't want to do that long term. And if they don't go uh, quarterback here, I could see them going the linebacker Isaiah Simmons from Clemson. I think that would be a really fun duo, him and Duran James, because they're very similar players in, in the means that they're both very versatile. And I feel like that would be a really fun defense to watch. But I think you got to go the future right now. You can't gamble and maybe hope that you can sign someone in free agency eventually later on or maybe draft someone in the draft next year. You have a potential franchise quarterback falling to you right now at pick six, and you take it. Now with the seventh overall pick, the Carolina Panthers, I had them selecting the linebacker, Isaiah Simmons from Clemson. Um, they lost Luke Keekley and lots of people are sort of underrating the fact that Yes, Isaiah Simmons is super versatile, but you're going to have to rework an entire defensive scheme to get him to line up in certain places. He played 500 snap, uh, 100 snaps in five different locations on the field, like deep safety, linebacker, a defensive end, slot corner, and I'm forgetting the last position, but he was, played five different positions, 100 snaps. That's extremely versatile, and... I think you have Matt Rule coming in. He's going to bring in a new defensive scheme, and that would be really easy to work in this stud, versatile player, someone who could potentially replace Luke Keekley, and you can do that pretty easily. And the fact is, I think that's a perfect place for him in Carolina. You have a defensive scheme that's going to already be changing, and you can work him in pretty seamlessly. And I think Matt Rule is going to love having a stud defensive uh, linebacker slash defensive weapon almost for the next, who knows, seven years, five years, whatever it is. Good good pick right here. Now with the eighth overall pick, I have a trade alert happening here. I see the Oakland Raiders trading up with the Arizona Cardinals and giving up their 12th, 80th, 81st, 2021st, and the 2022nd around pick to trade all the way up for, I think you guys know where I'm going here, but I think they're going to select Jordan Love, the quarterback from uh, Utah State. Uh, I think the Las Vegas Raiders, they're going to need a new quarterback. Derek Carr was really good, and then he got hurt multiple seasons. He broke his he broke his leg, and then the next season he fractured his back. And ever since that, he hasn't been the same player. And yes, I really want Derek Carr to succeed. I really like Derek Carr in his peak. I mean, he was a borderline MVP candidate back in 2016, and he had a pretty solid case for it as well. And it all fell apart, but 
you can't just keep on going and going and going and hoping that this team can, you know, take the next step with Derek Carr. It's been a couple years. He hasn't really shown that much on the field and it's pretty it's been pretty meh pretty much on the field for him. You need a new quarterback. Jordan Love has Patrick Mahomes potential. If you watch his tape, which I've watched a couple games from him, you have him making some really beautiful throws. And then if you look at the film on that same exact play, you're like, oh, he had a wide open option that he should have taken instead. But on top of that, he made a beautiful play, even though he didn't wasn't able to fully read the defense. There are also a couple plays where he throws like boneheaded interceptions, and you're like, what are you doing? His interception total did go up to 17 picks in his uh, last season with uh, Utah State. That's obviously not something you want to see, but if you can get a good quarterback coach, you have John Gruden there who can definitely help coach him. If you can learn how to read defenses better, because some plays he reads them really well, and some plays he just completely doesn't read them and misses wide open reads. And sometimes there are plays where he misses wide open throws as well. But his ceiling is so high. Derek Carr does not have that ceiling right now. Um, Jordan loves the best remaining quarterback left in this draft class. And I think Las Vegas is going to start over. The best way to start over in a new place is also to get a new franchise, new face of the franchise. You're getting one in potentially here in Jordan Love from Utah State. And I really like this pick for them. Now with the ninth overall pick, the Jacksonville Jaguars will select Derek Brown, the defensive tackle from Auburn. Um, I think this is a great pick, and the fact that Derek Brown fell all the way down here is testament to a quarterback rush that always happens literally every single draft class. Derek Brown has Fletcher Cox potential, in my opinion. There's so many players where I see him just completely... He's getting like triple teamed on plays, like pretty consistently, double teamed. It's freaky. He has that much strength. He's beating players consistently. He's a freak of nature. Um, lots of people have him dipping down because of his combine. But all you have to do is wa- just watch one game of his tape and you're going to realize how great of a player he is. And frankly, you lost Calais Campbell. You're probably going to lose Yannick Ngakwe to a trade later on this offseason, or maybe later, at least in free agency. And yes, they don't play the same position, but you need to stack up their defensive line, and Derek Brown is the best defensive lineman left on the board. No-brainer here. you got to go with the defensive line and help build up, uh, build up the trenches for a pretty young team. Now, with the 10th overall pick, I have the Cleveland Browns selecting an offensive tackle. And honestly, the three guys here are really good. Andrew Thomas, the tackle from Georgia. McKee Becton. Uh, the tackle from Louisville, and Tristan Wirfs, the tackle from Iowa. Honestly, you can go any of these. I think Tristan Wirfs has potentially the highest ceiling among these guys. He's also probably a bit safer than McKee Becton and um, Jedrick, uh, and, uh, Andrew Thomas. Honestly, you could pen in whichever tackle here. I just think Tristan Wirfs is the second best tackle in this class. So whichever tackle you think is the best, pen them in here and you're good. Cleveland needs to build up that offensive line after losing um, Joe Thomas to retirement. They did sign the tackle from Tennessee. I'm forgetting his name right now, but they did sign him. And I think you need to have two tackles, honestly. Uh, The offensive line was not good, and it was one of the downfalls of that entire team, along with Freddie Kitchens being just inept at his job. You can fix you fix one of those problems by getting rid of uh, Freddie Kitchens, and you can fix another by fixing up that offensive line. Now with the eleventh overall pick, I had the New York Jets selecting Jerry Judy, the wide receiver from Alabama. Honestly, whichever wide receiver you have here, um, C.D. Lamb or Jerry Judy, um, whichever one you have is the best wide receiver. Honestly, for me, it's, it's interchangeable. You can pen in whichever one you want. Um, Sam Darnold needs that wide receiver threat outside. They lost Robbie Anderson to free agency. Quincy Anunua has been hurt. They don't really have that many good players there. And I think Jerry Judy is potentially the best wide receiver in this class. So you got to go with that and hope you can pull a Falcons and with Matt Ryan and Julio Jones and have a wide receiver who can grow with with your young quarterback, Sam Darnold. With the 12th overall pick, I had the Cardinals trading down with the Raiders, who ended up drafting Jordan Love. I think here they go with an offensive tackle. They got uh, DeAndre Hopkins from the Texans in an absolute daylight robbery of a trade. They fixed that wide receiver position. I think they're going to have to fix the offensive tackle position now. McKee Becton is a huge guy. He's a mauler. Pressed everyone running his 40 at the combine, and his combine was overall was amazing. 
he's a freaky athlete. He's just big. And if you can uh, help him develop a little bit more, he can definitely be a franchise tackle for that team and help protect Kyler Murray going on for years to come. Now with the 13th overall pick, I have the Arizona Cardinals selecting CeeDee Lamb, the wide receiver from Oklahoma. Um, CeeDee Lamb is great. He's a great yak guy. He's great at getting open, great at making great catches. Everything about him screams wide receiver one, arguably the best wide receiver in this class. And the fact is um, you need a good wide receiver if you are the 49ers and you lost Emmanuel Sanders in free agency. You need someone to replace him. CeeDee Lamb has higher potential than whatever Emmanuel Sanders could have offered you last season. In his 30s, CeeDee Lamb is just, I can't say anything much about him. He's just so good of a player. Just Again, watch the film. You have a stud wide receiver one here to help develop with Jimmy Garoppolo. Nothing wrong here. Great pick in my opinion. Now with the 14th overall pick, I have a trade alert happening here as well. I have the Philadelphia Eagles trading up with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, giving up their first round pick, their third round pick, and a 2022nd. I have them jumping the Denver Broncos in selecting the remaining of the big three wide receivers here. Henry Ruggs, fastest wide receiver in this draft class. Um, Philly is in desperate need of speed. You saw what happened when Deshaun Jackson got hurt for them. Their offense pretty much crumbled around them until late in the season when Carson Wentz and Doug Peterson could eventually come up and salvage the season. Henry Ruggs is the best wide receiver remaining on the board. And honestly, with wide receiver being such a question mark here, there's no problem here for me picking them. And I think this trade could very well happen in real life. The Denver Broncos are most likely going to select Henry Ruggs if he falls to 15. So jumping up at 14 is a pretty great value for them. And you are getting that ability to have a real number one wide receiver on the outside. And that is what Henry Ruggs is here. So great pick for the Eagles and shoring up that wide receiver position for them. Now with the 15th overall pick, the Denver Broncos are probably steaming that their number one wide receiver is gone. But in the last few years, if you look, no fly zone has kind of left. Um, they lost to Keeb Tlaib. They traded him away, I believe, uh, to the Rams. They lost... Um, they lost Chris Harris to the Chargers this offseason. They lost Bradley Roby a, f- uh, a few offseasons ago, I believe. And they don't really have that number one corner left anymore. That was really one of the biggest driving proponents of that no-fly zone. C.J. Henderson, in my opinion, is the best corner left on the board. He's not a big talker, but he definitely is a baller when it comes to playing cornerback on the field. And you're missing that if you're Denver, and I think he's the best player on the board potentially, and you're getting that at pick 15. So great pick for them, and hopefully bringing back that no-fly zone for future seasons. Now with the 16th overall pick, I have the Atlanta Falcons replacing Vic Beasley and drafting Caleb Von Chase on the edge rusher from LSU. He might be more of a 3-4 edge rusher, so looking back on it, I might want to change this pick to someone maybe like your Tor Gross Matos. But I think Clay Von Chase on probably has better pass rushing potential than anyone else left on the board when it comes from edge position. And honestly, your edge pressure when you're Atlanta has been terrible recently. Vic Beasley was a huge bust for you when you drafted him pretty early in the first round when you drafted him. And you need that number one edge rusher. You don't have that currently. And Caleb Von Chase on can definitely fill that void for you going into the future. Now with the 17th overall pick, I have the Dallas Cowboys selecting Xavier McKinney, the safety from Alabama. I think they lost Jeff Heath. Um, they lost Byron Jones. They definitely need someone who can play that safety position. And Xavier McKinney is arguably a better pick than Grant Delpit, at least for the Cowboys, I believe. He plays more. He's plays more of a strong safety role, and he's a better strong safety, a pure strong, a strong safety than. Uh, Grant Delpit, the safety from LSU, is. Um, They lost Jeff Heath, who was a strong safety. They need someone to replace him. Xavier McKinney, he had some massive fumbles. Um, I really liked what I saw from him. He's a pretty short tackler, probably the best tackler uh, from the safety position in this year's class. Dallas is in desperate need of some defensive uh, help in the backfield there, in the back end, and Xavier McKinney can definitely fix that for them. 
Now, with the 18th overall pick, the Miami Dolphins currently possess that pick. I had them selecting an offensive tackle, and they're probably extremely happy that Andrew Thomas, the tackle from Georgia, fell into their lap. Um, they lost or traded away Larry Mitunso last year to the Houston Texans, and they're very much drafting an Andrew Thomas replacement here. Georgia is really well known for their offensive linemen in the last few years, and Andrew Thomas is no different. He's definitely part of that big four offensive tackle group. And he's the last one here, and you're getting him if you're Miami at pick 18. And honestly, you should be happy if you're Miami here. Potentially drafting that franchise offensive tackle to help uh, protect Tua Tagovailoa in the future. Now with the 19th overall pick, I have the Oakland Raiders selecting a wide receiver here. They don't really have any good wide receivers out there in Oakland or Las Vegas. And I had them selecting Justin Jefferson, a uh, wide receiver from LSU. Really broke out with Joe Burrow and... Honestly, Justin Jefferson is probably the safest wide receiver, and he's most likely everyone's fourth wide receiver uh, ranked going into the draft. He's You need a playmaker, and you just drafted Jordan Love, like I had them drafting in this mock. You need to go with a wide receiver to help pair with him early on in his career and help them build that chemistry. Justin Jefferson is probably the best bet for you. Now with the 20th overall pick, uh, the Jacksonville Jaguars, they lost A.J. Boye. They lost uh, Jalen Ramsey. I have them picking a corner. Christian Fulton is my best corner remaining on the board. He's extremely athletic, has that speed. He locked down multiple number one guys. I think his rep has sort of dropped recently just because um, in the championship game, T. Higgins kind of walked all over him. But Christian Fulton is definitely a top-tier quarterback, cornerback, and he has that potential, and he's going to bring that for a secondary-deprived team like the Jaguars. Now with the 21st overall pick, I have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers who traded back with the Philadelphia Eagles. I have them selecting Josh Jones, the offensive tackle from Houston. You need to protect Tom Brady. Um, his entire career has had a pretty reliable offensive line in front of him. You haven't had that recently in Tampa Bay. And honestly, I think offensive line is probably your biggest priority if you're Tampa Bay currently. And Josh Jones is arguably the best tackle remaining on the board. You could honestly also go interior lineman, maybe someone like Cesar Ruiz, uh, the uh, the center. But I think Josh Jones probably fits that more stereotypical tackle need that they currently need on that team. And honestly, you just need to protect your quarterback, which is what I have most of these teams with young quarterbacks and also Tom Brady doing in this draft. Now with the 22nd overall pick, I have the Minnesota Viking using the pick they got from the Buffalo Bills. I have them picking Javon Kinlaw. The defense tackle from South Carolina, Javon Kinlaw, is a beast. And I already used the Fletcher Cox comp with Derek Brown. But again, this man is a beast. He's 315 pounds, weighing in for the senior bowl, I believe it was. Six foot six. He's a monster. He has that extreme strength. His entire play is just pushing people out of the way. He doesn't have really like defined pass rushing moves. Every time you talk to him, it's just, oh, yeah, my move is pushing people away. And if that doesn't work, I'm going to keep pushing them out of the way. And he can do it. Um, maybe the only guy he couldn't really do it against was Lloyd Cushenberry in the Senior Bowl. But he was pretty much pushing over everyone. And you lost Lidville Joseph recently. You lost Everson Griffin on that defensive line if you're Minnesota. And Javon Kinlaw is probably the best defensive lineman on the board. And honestly, I think he might go well before this. He could honestly end up going... Uh, maybe to a team like Atlanta who needs defensive line help. Uh, maybe even depending on where Derek Brown goes, he could definitely go significantly earlier, earlier here The pick 22. Now at pick 23, I have the New England Patriots selecting Yatur Gross Matos, the pass rusher from Penn State University. Um, honestly, New England's a wild card here. I think they they've lost pass rushers in recent years, and they don't have that same pass rush that was getting like leading the league or really close to leading the league in sacks pass rusher is probably the most important position other than quarterback and they the best quarterbacks are taken already on this in this draft so i think they go best edge rusher left with yator gross matos and i don't really know knowing can go a ton of different ways but this is just the one way i have them going right now in this mock now with pick 24, I have New Orleans Saints selecting Kenneth Murray, the linebacker from Oklahoma. I originally had Patrick Queen here, but I think Kenneth Murray is, I think he might be better than Patrick Queen. He's more physical. He's a bigger guy. He has that Tremaine Edmonds sort of vibe around him where 
in college, Tremaine Edmonds from Virginia Tech, I believe it was, he was super big, super athletic. He just didn't know what he was doing, and he would bite on runs a lot. And he wasn't really great, like, mindset-wise. I think Kenneth Murray is very similar to that. And he's probably the Kenneth Murray uh, or the Tremaine Edmonds of this draft. Nolan Saints, they don't really have a linebacker. Um, they have Anzalone, Torres, ACL. They have Vantai Teo. And I can't really name anyone else for the linebacker position. They need help back there in that defense. And I think Kenneth Murray can very much uh, help that team on the defense side of the ball. Now with pick 25, I have the Vikings with their Second pick in this draft, I had them selecting a cornerback, Jeff Gladney from TCU. They lost Xavier Rhodes in free agency. He was kind of a bum already. He was pretty washed. They lost Alexander, the slot cornerback, to the Bengals, along with Trey Waynes, who also went to the Bengals. There were Anthony Harris, their safety might end up getting traded. And they have Harrison Smith, but he's getting up older. Uh, I think he's now 30 or 31. They need a defensive back, and Jeff Gladney is arguably the best defensive back left on the field along with maybe Trevon Diggs, the corner from Alabama. You need a corner here, and honestly, I can't say much about this pick because they need a corner, and Jeff Gladney is arguably the best corner left on the board. Now with the 26th overall pick and also the Miami Dolphins' last pick in the first round in this year's draft class, they have, I have them picking Grant Delpit, the safety from LSU. He's more of a free safety. He's super instinct, uh, instinctual. His tackling is pretty solid. He did miss a ton of tackles. And actually, Najee Harris, of running back from Alabama, when they ended up facing Alabama, ran right all over Grant Delpit. He had like six broken tackles on him. Uh, but other than that, his tackling was pretty solid. He, there's a reason why he won number uh, war number seven back there for the LSU Tigers. It's because he's a good defensive player and just a good player in general. Miami has Rashad Jones, but he's getting older. I think they need a safety, and Grant Delpit falling to 26th is a huge steal for them. Now with the 27th overall pick, I have the Seattle Seahawks selecting A.J. Apeneza, the edge rusher from Iowa. They are probably going to lose Davion Clowney uh, to free agency, depending on where he goes, but they can't really afford him. They lost Jaron Reed, the defensive tackle, to free agency. He hasn't been signed anywhere yet, but they're most likely not going to bring him back. They drafted TJ Collier last year from TCU, I believe, in the first round. He wasn't really that good, but they also need more pass rushing help this year after losing Clowney. AJ Epineza is pretty freaky, I feel like. He he's arguably better than you to across Motus. Uh, I think those guys are pretty comparable though. They need an edge rusher and he's the best one on the board. And Honestly, if you're Seattle, you need to start bringing back some pressure and you can't really be this playoff team that you were this season without developing and getting all that good pressure that they were getting on the defensive side of the ball. And A.J. Epineza can give that to them. Now with the 28th overall pick, I have the Baltimore Ravens selecting Patrick Queen, the linebacker from LSU. Um, two LSU players and two picks. I think that Patrick Queen is extremely athletic, extremely fast, and... The Baltimore Ravens don't really have any linebackers that I can name for you. They are pretty weak in that unit. And Patrick Queen is really athletic. He's a, he was a baller for that LSU Tigers defense, Same with uh, along with Grant Delpit, like I said previously. And you need a linebacker, and you have one falling into your lap here at pick 28, which isn't really going to happen. He's definitely going to be taken in the next couple picks. So you got to go with this pick, I think. Baltimore Ravens, Patrick Queen, he's going to stick in purple, I feel like. Now with the 29th overall pick, I had the Tennessee Titans selecting Zach Bond, the defensive lineman from Wisconsin. He's more of a 3-4 outside linebacker, and they've run a 3-4. Uh, they drafted Harold Landry from Boston College a couple years ago. He's been pretty good. They did lose um, Javon Curse, I believe his name is, to free agency this year. They need to stack up that defensive line talent. Again, Zach Bond is... Probably the best 3-4 outside linebacker left in on the board, and you need someone to fill that role, and you're getting one here at pick 29. Now, at pick 30, I have the Green Bay Packers selecting Denzel Mims, the wide receiver from Baylor. 
I really like Denzel Mims. He's a great jump ball receiver, great on the sideline, great with these back shoulder fades. He did run a 4-3-8 uh, at the combine. I don't think that's his playing speed. I think that's more of him training for the combine and the 40 specifically and running that great time. I don't think that shows much in his film. But you need a jump ball receiver, and you have one here at Denzel Mims. He could definitely end up developing into that wide receiver X alongside Devontae Adams. He has that wide receiver one potential. I think Green Bay is needs to get a wide receiver alongside Van Rogers. They lost Geronimo Allison to free agency. He wasn't really that good. He ended up signing with Detroit. The Marcus Valdez Scantling wasn't that good. I think Alan Lazard, the rookie, ended up being their best wide receiver outside of Devontae Adams. And you can't be having that. Alan Lazard was like a fifth round pick, sixth round pick. Denzel Mims can come into that wide receiver room and clearly become the wide receiver too. And you got Aaron Rodgers throwing you the ball. And anything can happen with Aaron Rodgers throwing you the ball. I could also see them going with T. Higgins here. Um, T. Higgins and Denzel Mims are kind of comparable. They're both bigger, more jump ball type of receiver guys. Not really extremely fast on film, but they need a wide receiver here. And I think Denzel Mims is better than T. Higgins. So that's where they end up going. Now with the 31st overall pick, the San Francisco 49ers uh, second pick in the first round. I had them selecting a corner here, Trevon Diggs from Alabama. Trevon Diggs has all the physical capabilities. He has that length. He was doing really well on guys like Jamar Chase and he was really he has that length. You can't teach length. He has that good physicality, everything like physicality, like physical wise like he has that. He's just more raw on the defensive sort of technique wise and I think going to a place like San Francisco where you have Richard Sermon could very well benefit uh, Trevon Diggs and a raw or corner like him. And honestly, you need a corner here outside of Richard Sherman. And I think Trevon Diggs can very much fill that role for San Francisco. And with the final pick in the first round, I had the Kansas City Chiefs, the Super Bowl winners, selecting Noah Igbenogane, the cornerback from Auburn. And yes, I'm really proud that I actually pronounced that on the first try. Uh, he's, he, again, similar to Travon Diggs. He has like all the physical capabilities. I think if he had waited and played an extra year in college, he could have been the best corner left on the board next year in the 2021 draft class. He came out a bit early, which I don't really like, but he has those phys physical capabilities and Kansas City needs some corners. They're pretty weak in that aspect after losing Marcus Peters a couple off seasons ago. They lost Kendall Fuller this year to Washington. Um, they need some defensive backup, and I think Noah Igbenogane can really help them in that aspect. So, yeah, that's it for my mock draft with trades, everyone. We're about, I think, 11 days from the draft now, and I'm getting kind of hyped because... The draft time is probably my best time. Uh, life is kind of boring right now with everyone being locked in. And I think the draft could really bring back some some of that nice sports fandom that everyone has been missing recently. So that's my mock draft. If you like what you've seen, like, subscribe, follow me, share, your po share this podcast with your friends, whatever you want to do. Thanks for listening and peace out. Bye.